in the I guess in the aftermath of the George Floyd protest in some respects I guess right maybe that's the thing it seems as if the black community worldwide or the black community of diaspora maybe the, an extension of the American culture we're sort of um, some or not me but I guess some people in that movement um, some people that kind of you know place themselves at the forefront of that movement are reassessing who their heroes are they're kind of calling out media companies and brands right Condé Nast at the moment is going through a whole heap of drama so much so there's rumors circulating on, on the web that supposedly you know um what's her name not Anna Winter. is it Anna Winter? yeah yeah Anna Winter that supposedly might leave Vogue from pressure from external sources due to everything that's going on at Condé Nast with Bon Appetit and all that nonsense so there's loads of um things happening in the works right but it seems as if as if like within the black community there is a concentrated effort to um, lift up the voices they want to lift up and of course try and cancel the ones that they don't want to be part of the culture because they are they aren't aiding or abetting the movement of black lives matter and in some weird way i don't know why this happened i guess the allegations against ian connor kind of reared their ugly head and if you're not familiar with it um in kind of what would you say he is a stylist right a brand a brand owner and a general kind of you know cultural socialite in that regard um, um very much affiliated with asap rocky crew and asap mob and does a whole bunch of stuff with org has his own brand had a few couple of one brand what was the brand with the funder revenge x storm right then he's kind of like moved on to doing his brand sicko does some video directing here and there and just generally you know does his thing keeps his head up uh, for the most part um stays out of the limelight and really kind of does his own thing from what i've seen but a few years ago there were some allegations that came out about him you know potentially being a sexual predator or being somebody that might have taken advantage of some women here and there allegedly um he was never convicted i don't think for any of those cases they never went as far as some they never went as far usually as you know comments on social media but for the most part it seems as if you know where they smoke this fire right where i think it was like at the time that i last read it it might have been like you know 12 girls now it's gone up to a considerable amount and so much so they put up a petition to kind of essentially get him cancelled right and this made me wonder um if cancel culture is actually real because I've kind of been thinking about this a lot lately. I think in the past few years, maybe off the back of reading, you know, Mark Ronson's book or just generally being curious about what's going on in culture at the moment that I've kind of come away with it thinking, especially being a big fan of Joe Rogan and what everything that he's built. Part of the reason why I'm a fan of Joe Rogan is because he's essentially been able to insulate himself from being cancelled because he's built his own little planet, his own little ecosystem. And it's a complete, it's, I guess it's in one way, it's um one way it's similar you won't say it's similar to alex jones but you could say Alex Jones is maybe in a similar position right he probably fucked up because of the you know of the of the covington kids comments that's really he, he went probably a bit too far or whatever was in whatever was intimate if he said it or not but my opinion is cancer culture doesn't exist if you're a very cash cash rich right you have a lot of money you can generally ride things out because you know when you get cancelled it usually takes a hit um on your ability to make money and you have to look at louis ck being a good example he mentioned once that you know he lost i think 30 million off the back of um the allegations of him being you know a sexual predator you know during the whole me too time um and they kind of having to cancel his premiere of his show cancelled maybe other things he had in development tours were off the books blah 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 blah. so it cost him in the end like 30 million right so if you're cash rich you can survive being cancelled <laughs> and the other thing i think is number two the most important thing is if you've got fans if you've got one 100 i'd say to 1000 true fans fans that would buy whatever you make um go to whatever show you put on regardless of what's happening in the news that's when i don't think you can get cancelled but i think the people that have been cancelled usually in the world who you know, successfully have been unfortunately regular nine to fivers i think they get cancelled quite easily so if you're somebody that had a rapper poor and you suddenly got yourself embroiled in this extremely toxic work environment in Bonaparte, people people being your staff are calling you out as being a tyrant as being somebody that doesn't acknowledge you know 
black and brown faces it's gonna be very difficult for you to kind of survive this because you just had a regular job it was a high paying job which is a regular job you're a regular citizen and you can't you know so you don't really probably have the cash reserves that joe rogan has or that alex jones has to kind of ride it out so i think ian connor's in the same position if you think about it you know with the brands that he's put on and the stuff that he does outside of the outside of our view right behind the scenes because a lot of a lot of money gets generated behind the scenes that you don't really have any idea about stuff that's done kind of off the books um or is done kind of you know um without any kind of credit without any kind of credit being given those are usually a big money maker so if he is as cash rich as he says he is or as he kind of purports to be and if for the most part he has a really devoted group of fans that love what he does which i think he does in terms of ian connor i find these sort of like public shamings and cancellations a bit of a waste of time and i say that only because the allegations against him are really serious so if they're sexual assault allegations are you would just think people just go to the police right and go report it um if you really want to see justice served however painful and hurtful that may be because 30 people are just way too much right to be ex uh, accused of for it to be okay you can't just ride that one out you have to kind of you can't no you're not ride it out you if you're the pe if you're the people accusing him of you can't just let him get away with that you sort of have to go to the police you'd have to hope so but you know who knows but this is a petition they put out on change.org regarding the whole issue that's bloody hell that kind of runs through it so it says Incoming rape allegations have been circulating since his rise to popularity, regardless of the brave women so there who have come. The writing on here is weird, and regardless of the brave women who have come forward with these as evidence, the criminal justice system has failed them. Incon has still been received co signs and being able to conduct business as usual, while these women have lived to live with their sexual injustices committed by Incon and racial injustices committed by the judge, criminal justice system. That's a weird one, though, isn't it? Incon is black himself. And then they're saying they're being discriminated against because they're black again by the judicial system. That's a very weird one. But let's continue. He says, um, we are encouraging that people that co-sign him to denounce any association with him and encourage him to begin to attempt to right his wrongs that were not brought to justice through the criminal justice system. We can't allow internet personalities to be exempt from repercussions. But they are though, isn't it? That's the problem. They really are. Um, I don't think, I, again, that's why I just think it goes back to the cash rich and having fans. I look at someone like a Tanner, right? Who would have thought Tanner would have survived TanaCon? Like, like legitimately. Looking at what TanaCon descended into, the horror show that it was, you know, little teenage girls, you know, getting sunstroke, um, that dude going around in a Segway, just a complete horror show, but somehow she did. And why did she do that? Because she's cash rich and she has 1,000 true fans that will buy everything that she puts out, which will allow you to have some sort of career. So, that isn't gonna happen and then the bit there about his friends still co to, to denounce him that's never gonna happen though i think we've seen that with people in the scene especially in streetwear they don't really have an, a moral compass they don't really have any kind of backbone they just go with whatever has whatever they, they just go with the wind they just kind of follow the clout wind really for the most part which is you no know, it's not a bad thing that's how that scene kind of um that's how it's, that's how that ecosystem sort of stays alive isn't it by essentially kind of trading each other's clout and trading each other's networks and sort of kind of building upon that building a bigger network and then kind of putting people in position and then that kind of solidifies you da, 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 da. so it sort of works so to expect them to sort of and again the other part of it as well if they're actual friends regardless of what they think he might have done it's just a bit naive to expect them to come out and you know what diss their friend in public to get points off of random people on the internet that's not something that someone's ever going to do so um if anything like i said if you really want change go to the police but uh, you know I'm, I'm sure trying to get somebody convicted of rape after the fact is probably a lot harder but that's the only solution that you do have if you really want that to get sorted and pff, will that happen anytime soon probably not especially with the stuff going on in the world now is this the most opportunistic time to do that maybe it is because everyone's at home and they're paying attention to it i don't know um so this is only the beginning it says continues here we are currently working on a civil lawsuit we will not be discussing this case publicly in the hopes to keep the victim safe and to ensure a fair trial as the defendant has already made threatening statements okay this is pretty i guess it's pretty um self-evident there it says we also would like to address the people who will attempt to deny the reality of the situation with responses to common remarks made in regards to Ian Connor's criminal justice. They say here, where's the proof? They said they have over 30 women have come forward both privately and publicly, some in ways that dirt 
some in ways that do not initially address his name. This is not normal. This isn't normal and shouldn't be normalized to believe that over 30 women should have their story dismissed. Yeah, that's a bit in it. That's like the Russell Simmons stuff in it. You hate to believe it, but when it's women in double digits and then you're oddly enough having to move to Bali, it just looks a bit weird, isn't it? But then I guess on the other side of it, if you legitimately think you're innocent and you do get proven to be innocent or the girls may be, I don't know, what happens to the people that accused you and dragged your name through the mud? This no one re that's the problem with these sort of allegations. No one wins in it. I guess even if the women do get compensated monetarily for something horrific that happened to them, it's not as if that's going to wash away anything that happened to them in that instance, right? That kind of being um being defiled in that way, you're not gonna get any kind of satisfaction because you took that person's, you know, bank account away from them. And the person being accused from it about, about that thing is also going to have their life destroyed. So it's a complete horror show, really, in all words. So maybe that's why it should be handled with a degree of sensitivity. It should maybe be handled off the internet a little bit. I'm not really a fan of this stuff. I guess they're trying to do it maybe to bring attention to the uh, whole issue. But they, there was a lot of articles about Ian Connor before when these articles got when it, when the first allegations came about. You don't need to do this now. You can just go down the legal route and do it the right way. But hey, what do I know? It continues here, it says, for those that are looking for evidence in order to believe the f over 30 women that have come forward, please refer to one of the public court documents that has already been filed against the defendant for sexual battery below by Milika Anderson. The document has been provided by the Blake County. Oh, Jesus. Okay, it's too many details there about legal stuff, but that's one part. And then I guess he sort of responded to the allegations in some roundabout way via some Instagram video featuring a really nice sample or featuring a little leaked version of a Playboy Carti track that hasn't come out yet, I think at the moment. Let's see if I can find it. I remember watching it the other day. Um, He's kind of tweeted about it since. Da, da, da. But yeah, this is the video where he sort of kind of addresses it, I guess, in some way, shape, or form. Let's quickly watch that. Da, 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 da. about the fact that he bought the car outright pink slips right something about that and i guess it's a ferrari i guess it's some 20 fuck you time out cancel what bitch there you go that's the basic answer to questions in about not being cancelled um if as long as you got money and i guess again if you're not worried because he doesn't strike me as somebody that's very that cares a lot about having industry friends if you look at his instagram he's always hanging out in the hood somewhere in atlanta you know he's always hanging around with like you know uh very uh what do you you'd probably refer to them as street rappers in that regard right he doesn't necessarily hang out with all the kind of fashion world glitterati who might kind of shun him and be a little bit you know uh, standoffish he tries to keep he tries to place himself with the people as they say in america so if you're doing that and you're minding your business and you're stacking your money and somebody is um accusing you of such heinous crimes you probably would sleep easy knowing that you know regardless what happens you still got the money you know he he went to prison for a year didn't he on a gun charge and came out pretty well so he's probably got enough money to withstand any kind of you know threat and he's probably aware as well that you know it's probably not going to go as far as it should do because why didn't it go as far as it did previously i guess you know some of the girls probably backed out they didn't want to put themselves in the public because it must be difficult right when you're accusing somebody of such a heinous crime and then you went into you have to go through giving evidence and going to court it's not the most enjoyable of experiences so he probably might be just really confident that this is not going to go any further or that he just didn't do anything wrong i don't know uh, if obviously if i was his lawyer i probably wouldn't advise doing this but hey what do i know yeah. 
Showing us a, a Chrome Hearts Big Dazzle jewelry piece, I guess, that he got made custom. No glass, stupid. <laughs> yeah. All these, these, these cat bad rap niggas, Reynolds. I don't knock no leases, that's smart. But it's my first car, I had to buy it. Had to flat out own it. Had to own it. Just like everything else in my life, bro. I'm, le I'm leaving this shit to my family. Raven and Michaela get out there. Capo get this. Capo get this when I die. That ain't Lee Steven. That ain't Lee Steven. That's owned. That's owned. Black owned. Support black owned cars. <laughs> Oh, I guess let's put black on cars. Let him do what he wants to do in it. I guess let's see what happens. <coughs> Maybe there'll be some developments. Maybe he'll learn from it. Maybe he'll grow. We don't know. We don't know.